Hello everyone, it's Kylie back with you, otherwise known as Paper Sweet Pea. And I am so happy for today's video. It is another Scrap With Us collaboration where I'm joining my good friend Lauren, who is Crafts Some Joy from the USA. Now, if you follow along with our little video series, you know that we've recently had a short little break over Christmas and New Year. That was totally my fault, I apologize. I've recently just moved. But we're really excited to be back and today we're creating with the brand new Scrap Happy 2 collection which has released with Creative Memories. Now as always, Lauren and I have both put together a downloadable and printable PDF guide which is available on each of our individual websites. When you download and print uh, my instructions, you'll see they are full colour step-by-step instructions. It's also going to feature the page map that you will need to create uh, my layout from today. It has the cutting guide and all of the measurements. And once you finish watching my video, do be sure to head on over to Lauren's YouTube channel and see the gorgeous design that she's put together for you all as well. But don't worry, I'm going to link everything below my video so you'll be able to find everything really easily. Now I am here live with you and I'd love for you to say hi in the chat box and ask any questions that you may have. But for now, let's get started. So Lauren and I are going to be working with the brand new Scrap Happy 2 collection today. If you haven't uh, had a good look at this collection, it's a really fun collection for the scrapbooker. So sometimes when uh, you are the scrapbooker of your family, you tend to forget to document your own creative journey. Um, you know, we get caught up documenting our friends and families and important events, but I think it's really important to document uh, your own creative journey as well. So this is what this collection is good for. I actually think too, if you are a planner and you like to um, decorate uh, a planner. I think this collection would be perfect for that as well. Uh, it saw the launch of a couple of new tools. We have the scissors decorative border punch, which I love. We've got the double rickrack border maker cartridge, which I think will be super fun. My idea today for my layout. I have a whole bunch of photos of cousins crafting a very fun, cute craft day, the four of them having a lot of fun. And I thought, you know what, something I've never really demonstrated before is doing a page cluster or um, a page map, so to speak. So I'm going to have a page with a whole bunch of photos and I'm going to complement that with a decorative page where I use the laser cut papers. You'll see that I've already matted some of these photos. The reason for that is I've got a lot to get through today and I don't want to be sent to the naughty corner <laughs> for taking too long. So I've already matted these. I am going to give all the measurements, so don't worry. And all the measurements are also in my printable PDF, which you'll find on my website, which is linked below. So I've already done a little bit of prep work just to save us time. Okay, so I want to talk about this laser cut paper. Um, you can see that we've got green on one side, we've got the trademark Creative Memories blue on the other, and you can see these little cutouts, they're so darling around the border of this. I'm going to use this on my decorative page and I also want to add the camera over the top. Now, there is a similar page actually in the marketing material on the website, similar. Um, I'm going to change mine around just a little bit, but I just want to note this page here, it is actually 12 by 12 if you count sort of the top of those arches there. However, because of the space in between, you may still want to back it and I'm going to do that today and I'm just going to use some white cardstock. By all means, I encourage you if you like to conserve your papers and your cardstock, then I highly recommend gutting this page, removing the center, which you know I've demonstrated quite a few times. Um, I'm not going to gut mine today, uh, but you do what suits you best. So I think having that little white background, just filling in those edges, I think that will make all the difference in my album, um, just to have it nice and square. And I think it adds a nice little feature to um, the back of it anyway. But then I sort of got thinking and I thought, you know what, 
it'd be nice to add a little bit of color by backing um, some of these circles. Now again, I've done a little bit of prep work, but the thing I love with Creative Memories with all of these designs is everything always just seems to fit with our tools. So I found that the smallest circle cutting template along with my blue blade cuts a circle to be the perfect size to go in behind um, these little cutouts. And because there's such, you know, there's a couple of bright colored papers um, in this collection, I thought it'd be fun to sort of mix up the yellow, the mauve, and it's sort of an, a peachy toned paper as well. And I'm still going to use uh, the white as an accent as well, but I've done these off camera again to save time. But basically all I'm going to do, I'll just get my white cardstock out of the way. All I'm going to do, I'm just going to use my repositionable tape and I'm just going to add a little bit to the back of each circle. And then I'm just going to alternate um, each color and I am going to leave one open so that the white shows through. So this is just super simple. It's not using a lot of my paper, but when we turn it over, it's going to give a really um, colorful and fun effect to our completed page. And as I said, it's just drawing in um, some different colorways that um, we can add to our layout. So I'm going to go ahead and just keep adding these all the way around my frame and then we can add it uh, to our white cardstock. Okay, so that has all of our little circles in place. I'll bring back in our white cardstock. Just line that up nice and square on my mat and I can add my little laser cut paper over the top. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to use my regular tape runner. So not the repositionable tape runner. Um, I just find the laser cut papers are very, they're a great quality. They're really quite thick. And because I'm adhering directly over cardstock, I just wanna make sure that this baby's not going anywhere. And of course I've run out that always happens when I'm filming and just going to add a few tiny little extras there to add to our cardstock. This is really easy to line up because as I said, it is already 12 by 12. So we're just making sure we get it nice and straight on our white cardstock and we can press that down into place. How fun is that? I really love those colors around that border. Okay, so I'm going to bring in another laser cut here, which is this really cool little camera. Um, it has two colored sides. We've got the apricot or the peachy toned, and then we've got the blue. I still really want to use the blue side. However, blue on blue, it's not going to stand out a great deal. So this is where I'm going to layer some paper. I'm going to bring in the green and my 12 inch trimmer with the straight blade. And I'm, I'm going to cut it down to 10 inches by 10 inches. And that way we can just add this little bit of color to the background. Save these strips that you're cutting off because you could use those for borders or for other little projects. And again, if you would like to, you can also gut this square if you want to conserve a little bit of paper, you'd be able to remove just a small amount from the center. And we can align that to have just that border piece showing like so. So that's prepared our background. Now we need to prepare our little lens here and you'll see that the center has some cutouts. Um, we've obviously got room for our photo and if we were to measure this square without all these little busy intricate center pieces, you're looking at a four by four photo and then with the rounded edge. You can of course back these little center pieces with some colorful paper. I think that would look amazing. I'm just going to back the Creative Memories logo. And I'm actually going to leave this part open because I have some photos here of our little cute little cousins crafting. 
and I actually don't mind seeing uh, the photo in this half arc but again you do what suits you uh, but I sort of want to be able to still see what is showing through this little arch here so that's why I'm not going to back it but I will back the center and again I'll probably add a few of um, the same colors that we used in our border I can bring those back in and there's some really fun prints on the back as well you've got the creative memories logo you've got your tape runners just really fun the best way though that I find to do things like this I will always flip um, the laser cut over so it's face down and when it comes to the paper I'm using, I will also place that face down. And it's basically just so, you know, you're not going to see any pencil markings. I know you can erase them, um, but sometimes that can lift colour from your pages. And I certainly don't want that. But basically what I'm doing, I'm just tracing with my pencil around the inside edge of the little sections, the little pie sections um, that I want to cut out. You want to cut um, a millimetre or so away from that pencil line. And the reason why you're going to do that is of course, you've got this, I call it a seam, you've got this seam line in between and you need to be able to stick the paper to something. So if you cut it out to the exact same size of that little cutout, um, it can be harder to get a neat finish. So I'll just show you. I've cut one out and you can see that it's just a few millimetres wider than that uh, original pencil tracing. And I'm just going to use my repositional tape. You can use whatever you like. You can use the little precision glue, pen, whatever you like. You can see I've stuck that down and because we've cut it out just a little bit wider for our seams there, when we flip it over, you're going to get a really neat finish and you can't see any pencil markings. So I'm just going to keep going ahead with all of those colours. Um, just the exact same process until I filled in that little centre space. Okay, so as you can see, I've backed all of my small little pieces and I've also put some yellow behind the flash up here. And this can be added to the page square or you can um, pop it on a little bit of a tilt, which is what I'm going to do. And all that's really left to do now is to add our photos in behind. You'll notice I've only got three photos. That's because I'm going to add journaling to this bottom right hand corner. Okay, now because we need to cut these photos down to the 4x4, we just need to look at our subject matters to see what's going to work. See in this little photo, I've actually, we've chopped little Harry off here on this side. So this would be a good photo to go into our frame. Um, we've got plenty of other photos of little Harry. So I've just trimmed two inches off this width of that and you can see here that we've got this colored paper and I've got someone's arm in there so um, this would be a great little photo you know we've got this center piece that we've filled in this would be um, a good photo probably to go into this top left hand corner because we're still going to see uh, Lucy and Ollie but we're going to cover over uh, this arm and then let's see I can probably We've got Harry and Lucy. I could probably chop off Ollie in this one. And I've chopped, he's had his head chopped off in this photo as well. So it's all about, you know, making your photos work, cropping them down. So that's going to work nicely. And then this one, I'm just wondering if I can fit all three. Actually, no, that might be a nice one for... Harry and Lucy there. So I need to do a little bit of trimming from both sides there. We might take about oh, half an inch off this side and then we can trim it down to four through Ollie there. And I think that will work in our bottom square because we're going to cover over. Yeah, that'll work nicely. Okay, so. When you've sorted out your photos, make some room here. So we want this one to 
the bottom left side. And I'm just adding a little bit of repositionable tape to the seams of that square. And we can add our first photo. Gosh, I hope I got that around the right way. I didn't check. <laughs> that would be bad. Okay, so we've got that one. And then this one, we want it in the top. And then we can pop Harry and Lucy into the top right. Okay, so now I just need to come in with my scissors and trim off the overhang there, sort of rounding out the corners. You can just carefully rest your scissors up against the frame and trim off um, the excess. Okay, now as I mentioned, I am going to add journaling to this bottom square and I think I know the perfect paper that I want to uh, add there for my journaling. And it's this really vivid blue because we've sort of got you know, the Creative Memories logo there, as well as some white space that I can add my journaling. So I really like that. So I'm going to cut a four by four corner from this paper. And just the same thing, I can trim away that paper. Okay, now I actually think this would work really well being adhered to the page with foam squares. This is, again, just me. It is going to use uh, quite a few of your foam squares. But I just think, since this is our decorative page of the two-page layout, I really want to sort of make this the focal point and I'm just going to add some foam squares so that we've got the height. For those of you cringing at how many foam squares I've used, look away. <laughs> so this is ready to have some embellishments. I'm not going to do that now. We'll come back to it once we've got our second page together. Okay, so it's time to talk our second page and you'll notice that I've brought in uh, the mint green there, the same as what we backed um, our little camera with on the first page. But basically I've got a whole bunch of photos. So I've got two, four, six, seven photos that I want to fit on the one page. Okay, so just so you know, I have not printed these middle photos smaller. You can, of course, that would be great. I've actually just cut mine down. I just want to show you an example of it. I've got little Harry and Lucy here. This is the original photo and you can see I had a lot of um, area that I could cut away from. So I've just cut down a six by four photo and it kind of looks as though it's zooming in um, on their little faces there. Um, so it's entirely up to you whether you want to print them to size or whether you want to cut them down, but I have just cut mine down. All of the measurements again will be in my PDF. However, I'll just run through quickly. We've got two six by four photo mats and I've trimmed my photo down to 5.75 by 3.75. Then I've got two four by four photo mats and the photo has been trimmed down to 3.75 by 3.75. These are a little trickier to make these fit, but my photo is two and a half by three and a quarter. And my photo mat is two and three quarters by three and a half. But basically I want to have an eighth of an inch of the paper, the background paper around my photo mat. So you can see it's just this small little area. And really once you've got your first photo into place, 
Um, it's really simple to line up the others. Um, as long as you're following those measurements on your cutting mat, it makes it so easy. So I'm starting there in the bottom corner, which I'm happy with there. And then I can just go ahead and put the other photos all in place. Okay, so with our photos in place, now we can have some fun with um, filling in these little spaces here. We'll start with this piece here, and I'm going to bring back over the other coloured papers that we used in our decorative page, in our border and such. And for this centrepiece here, we need to cut it down by three and a half. I might go this way. Three and a half by three and a quarter. So we need two pieces, one and a half by four. I'm going to use um, the mauve paper for these two sections. I've got one piece. It's not quite going to be enough. So I'll just trim another little piece off. One and a half by four. And that should have all the pieces that we need now to fill that in. So they will fit perfectly. Now before I stick them into place, I wanna have a little bit of fun with them with the new tools that were released because I really love these. And I'm just going to do a little bit of um, embellishing over the top of them, just layering some of those punches over the top. So I'll just sit that aside. So we've got our apricot, our two mauve there. So we really need to um, incorporate a bit of the yellow. So I've got the um, Rick Wrap Border Maker cartridge here, and I'm just going to punch down one side of the yellow paper here that we've been working with. I'll just insert that into the housing bracket and we can punch. Oh, they're fun. I really love those. And the cool thing is, don't throw these bits out because they'd even be really cool, you know, in a little border or something for cards. So save your little scraps there it's for another day. And let's do some of the mauve as well. We did cut this paper down. I'm not going to worry about that because we're trimming these regret pieces down. Okay, so I will cut down the apricot as well. Slide that in. Okay, so I'm bringing in this lighter blue and I'm just going to punch one strip of these. We're not going to use them all. Okay, so we've got all our bits and pieces punched. Isn't this just the most fun border? I love these scissors, they're so cool. All right, so I want to add some of the scissors down the side of my little apricot piece here. So I'll just find my scissors and we can trim that away. And I want to add just a pop of colour from my Rick Rack pieces here. Bit of my repo tape up against the other edge there. And we can add some of the mauve as well. Just gives a funky little bit of interest there to our decorative card. That's one. Let's add some of the apricot and the yellow to this mauve. And then let's layer our scissors over the top. How fun does that look? And it was so simple to 
layer those together. You can trim the scissors away. And I'm just going to repeat that to our second little strip, just exactly the same as we've done here. Okay, aren't they fun? And it just adds that pop of colour to our page to carry on over from our decorative page as well. So we can add them here. Okay, so I've pulled out these little embellishments. I'm not sure if you can see there on camera. They've actually got foiling to them as well. But I've got living our best life. And then I thought it'd be really cute to have the little camera at the top, like so. And I'm going to add these with foam squares as well, just so that we can raise them up from the page a little bit. Okay, so if we bring our pages together, we've got our decorative page and then we've got our story page. So we've fitted a whole bunch of um, photos into this page and then we've got our decorative page over here which we just need to add some embellishments to and I really love this oh happy day because it really was a happy day which we might add down to the base here now because we've got a little bit of overhang off this laser cut paper you can see there I'm just adding some little foam squares so that it won't sag it'll actually hold itself up Okay, so I know a lot of you are going to ask me about my journal strips. Um, as I've mentioned before, I don't like my own handwriting and I really like the aesthetic of adding um, little strips of journaling to my layouts. So what I've done here, this is just a scrap of the blue paper um, that we use to punch out the scissors on our story page. And I've just taken it through my typewriter and I've just typed out um, yeah, I'm vintage. I have a typewriter. <laughs> um, usually I will use my computer and just, you know, print it out from my computer off a Word document because I use white um, paper or cardstock. Uh, but because I wanted blue to go over this white paper, I've used my typewriter today. But all I'm going to do is I've just typed some short little sentences there from a journaling and I'll just trim it down until it fits. As I said, I know this isn't for everybody. I really like the aesthetic that um, this has with my pages of how it looks. And you'll see I'm just using my scissors to cut the strips out. I'm not going to worry too much if it's a little bit crooked um, because that's how I like it to look. Just going to trim them down so they're not as wide. And we can just stick these to our page. So here's both pages all completed and together. This is how it will open out in my album. I've got my decorative page and then I've got my story page. And you can see here, I didn't end up adding um, quite as much journaling as I originally typed out. It just looked a bit too busy uh, for how I wanted it to look. But overall, I'm really pleased at how these two pages came together. I just wanted to jump back on really quickly and thank all of you for being here today with me, watching me create. If you like the content that you've seen, it'd mean the world to me if you could like this video and perhaps leave a comment. Do be sure to head on over to Laura now and check out the beautiful page design that she's put together for you all. But for now, we shall see you next time. Take care. Bye.